I have been seeing these fluffy scarves everywhere this winter. A lot of them seem to be made from synthetic materials though, so instead of buying one, I opted to just make one. If you'd like to make one too, here is a quick tutorial. It's very beginner friendly and it's a great way to create something cozy for you or a friend this winter. So first things first, let's go to the yarn store. This is my favorite yarn shop that is local to me here in Montreal. And I'm going to go with a very neutral, kind of classic cream color for my scarf today, just so it matches with everything. To create our scarf today, we're going to use the double stockinette stitch, which you can see right here on this little swatch. As you can see, compared to regular stockinette, it's much thicker, much squishier, and it doesn't curl at all. So it's perfect for, for scarves. Nice and squishy, flat, it's great. Um, and you can also see, so I cast on 20 stitches to make both of these swatches, and double stockinette stitch will be approximately two-thirds of regular stockinette stitch. So we're going to have to cast on more stitches than we normally would for regular stockinette stitch to make the double stockinette stitch here today. So to make my scarf, I'm going to be using this fluffy alpaca yarn, which is by, it was just called Reiki, concept by Katya. And really you can use any type of yarn, but if you would like that very like brushed, soft, minimal stitch definition kind of scarf, I would recommend using something like this. I think um, San Mascar and Borstet Alpaca is very similar, I think in weight as well to this one. You could use um, Isayer Eco Soft, um, what else, Melody by Drops, really any of those types of yarn would be great for, for this type of scarf. So I've already knitted up a little gauge swatch, which you can see here, and it's very squishy and soft and fuzzy with minimal stitch definition, especially compared to, to this one. Um, okay, so I cast on the recommended amount of stitches for a 10 centimeter swatch, but as we previously discussed, this is going to give me a smaller length than that. So you can see it's around six, six and a half centimeters. So for my scarf, I'm going to cast on 44 stitches. And you can really cast on any amount of stitches that you like, if you would like it to be a thicker scarf or a thinner scarf. Um, but if you want to do the tassels on the scarf, I would recommend casting on a number of stitches divisible by four, because each of those tassels takes four stitches to, to make. To make your scarf, you're going to need your yarn. And the amount will vary pretty significantly depending on how long you make your scarf or how thick you make your scarf and what type of yarn you're using. You're also going to need some scrap yarn, and I recommend that it is something very smooth, like a cotton or this like tubular type of yarn, just nothing that's too fuzzy. You're going to need 6 millimeter needles, or 10 US, and the same thing for your crochet hook. 6 millimeter, or I believe in the US sizes, it's J. You can get away with using something a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, but something around 6 millimeters. So to begin, if you don't want to include the tassels on the ends of your scarf, you can do any cast on that you prefer, just just do a standard cast on. But if you would like to um, if you would like to include the tassels, then we're going to use a provisional cast on method. This will allow us to um, provisionally cast on stitches, knit our scarf, add the tassels to one side, and then come back and add the tassels to the other side. So to do that, you're going to need your crochet hook, one needle, and your scrap yarn. So initially we're going to create a slip knot and to do this you're going to wrap the yarn around your finger twice like this, pull the back loop over the front loop and then again back loop over front loop like this. You're going to take your crochet hook and insert it into that loop, tighten up but not too much and then you're going to begin chaining. To do this you're going to wrap the yarn like this and then chain one, and then again, chain two, and then again, chain three. All right, and now we're gonna continue chaining, but we're going to chain around our knitting needle, and this will be our provisional cast on. So to do this, we're going to take our needle and lay it over the yarn. So the yarn is at the back of the needle like this, and then we're gonna continue with our crochet hook chaining, 
but doing it around the needle like this. So we're gonna chain one, and you can see that's already created one stitch on our knitting needle. We're gonna take the yarn and put it again to the back of the knitting needle. And then again, pick up that scrap yarn with your crochet hook, chain one, take the yarn again to the back of your knitting needle, chain one, again, yarn to the back, chain one, yarn to the back, chain one. And you're going to keep doing that until you have the number of stitches on your knitting needle that you would like. And for me, that's 44 stitches. So I'll just continue. This is what your work should look like once you've cast on all your stitches. I should also mention that regardless if you decide to work the tassels or not, you should always cast on an even number of stitches. This will make working the double stockinette stitch much easier. So now we're just going to chain a couple more times off of the needle. I have my 44 stitches here, but we're going to just, we're just going to chain a couple, a couple extra. All right, and now I'm going to pull that tail out and we can cut it like that and then pull that extra yarn out. And I always tie a little knot here. This will let us know that when we come back, we should start unraveling our provisional cast on from this side. Now that we've finished the provisional cast on, we can begin working with our scarf yarn. So for the first row, we're going to just knit across the row. The only difference is gonna be is that we're going to knit into the back loop rather than the front loop, which is what you would normally do. So to do that, you're going to take your needle, insert it into the back loop, take your scarf yarn and wrap, wrap the yarn like this, tail in the back, working yarn in the front, hold on to both of those, and then knit one. And you're going to do that into the next loop as well. So you're going to take your needle, insert it into the back loop. You can now separate your yarn. So I always like to hold on to the tail for the first couple stitches just to make sure everything stays nice and tight. So you're going to take your working yarn, wrap it around your needle, knit one. And again, insert your needle, into that back loop and knit one. And you're going to keep doing that across the rest of the row. And this is what your work should look like once you've finished that first row. Just a normal row of knits. So to work the double stockinette stitch, we're going to knit into every other stitch and then slip every other stitch with the yarn in front purlwise. So to do that, we're going to insert our needle and knit that first stitch normally. And for the second stitch, we're going to bring our yarn to the front like this and then slip that next stitch purlwise like this and then repeat so bring the yarn again to the back so we can knit. Knit that stitch. Bring the yarn to the front. Slip the stitch purlwise. Bring the yarn to the back. Knit that stitch. Bring the yarn to the front. That stitch purlwise, bring the yarn to the back, knit that stitch, bring the yarn to the front, slip the stitch purlwise, bring the yarn to the back, knit, bring the yarn to the front, slip that stitch purlwise, bring the yarn to the back, and just continue that pattern.
So as you start to reach the end of the row, like this, you're going to see knit. And then your last stitch is always going to be a slip stitch like this. And you can see that stitch is a bit loose just because of the tail. So we can tighten that up. But as you can see, the working yarn ends one stitch before the end like this. So when you go to turn your work, the working yarn is essentially one stitch back. But that's not a problem. That's what you want. That's what you want to happen. So we're going to again follow the same pattern, always starting with a knit stitch here and always ending with a slip stitch here. All right, and now we're finishing that second row again with a slip stitch. So you can see that alternating pattern is starting to form. It's a bit harder to see because of the, the yarn being so fuzzy, but every row is going to be worked the same way, starting with a knit, ending with a slip stitch. And if you get confused, there's two things I generally do is I'll look for the, these little pearl bumps right here and here and here. Um, and if you see that pearl bump, you know that you should bring the yarn to the front and slip that stitch purlwise. Another thing I'll do is I'll count the stitches. So say, here I'll show you. All right, we'll be in that third row. Okay, so say I'm here and I don't know how to work this next stitch. I'll count the stitches I already worked. Since you always start with a knit stitch, Knit stitches will always be odd, and slip stitches will, will always be even. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. So since, since it's an odd number, you're going to knit that one like this. And that's pretty much it, guys. I'm going to keep following that pattern. Um, and I did want to make note that for the first couple rows, your work is still going to look pretty wide, much wider than the final piece will look. Um, but as you work maybe 10 or 20 rows, the material is going to, to become much more compact and that nice, thick, fluffy material is going to form. I've worked 10 more rows here and you can see that the material is tightened up real nice and it's very thick, nice and squishy. All right, I'll see you guys at the end. All right guys, and we're back. So I finished the length that I would like for my scarf. This is 160 centimeters or approximately 63 inches. All right, so to make our tassels, we're gonna work in the same stitch that we have been, the double stockinette stitch. But instead of working all the way across our row, we're only gonna work four stitches at a time. And we're gonna work those out to make a single tassel and we're gonna leave the rest of the stitches to rest on our needles. And this is why at the beginning, when I said you can cast on any amount of stitches you'd like to, to make a wider or a thinner scarf, but I would just rec I just recommended that you cast on an amount of stitches that it was divisible by four. So then all of your tassels can be the same width throughout the scarf. All right, so to get started, we're gonna work in the same way that we've been. We're going to knit the first stitch and pull the yarn to the front, slip the next stitch purlwise, take the yarn to the back, knit the next stitch, and then bring the yarn to the front, slip that fourth stitch purlwise, and bring the yarn to the back. Now, we're gonna leave all of these stitches on our left needle there. We're not gonna work them, they're just to rest. And we're gonna turn our work and then work this row. So it's just a, a row of four. So again, I'm going to knit that first stitch, bring the yarn to the front, slip that stitch purlwise, bring the yarn to the back, knit the next stitch, bring the yarn to the front, slip that last stitch purlwise, and you're done. So you can't see too much of a difference to begin with, but as you keep working those four stitches, it's going to grow and these stitches will, will remain at rest. 
All right, so let's just continue in that same pattern until we have about 10 centimeters. As you can see, our tassel has reached just about 10 centimeters or four inches, and it's gonna be much easier to measure your work if your tassel is resting on the opposite needle as um, the rest of your stitches. So I'm gonna just work one last row to get our tassel back on um, our main needle here. And that's what it's gonna look like. It's gonna be all bunched up like this. So we're now ready to bind off our tassel. And to do this, you can bind off however you'd like. I would generally recommend though knitting two stitches together at a time. If you do a more standard bind off where you knit one stitch at a time, your work is gonna your tassel is gonna be much wider at the end than the rest of your work. So I prefer to knit these two stitches so they're slanting to the left. And then I'm gonna knit the last two stitches so they're they're slanting to the right, so then the tassel hopefully kind of goes in a bit at the end. We're gonna to knit two together through the back loop like this. And that's gonna create our left leaning decrease. And then these last two, I'm gonna to knit to get two together through the front loop, which will create our right leaning decrease like this. As you can see, it, it's gotten a, a little bit smaller here. And then I'm just gonna slip the back stitch over the front one like that. And we're gonna pull that out. So we can now cut our working yarn. And that's our first tassel. We can just then take a needle and weave that, that end in right inside the tassel so you can't see that. The rest of your tassels are worked in the same manner. You're gonna work four stitches at a time and then leave the remaining stitches to rest. The only difference with the remaining tassels is you've cut your working yarn. So you're gonna to have to attach your yarn to start, to start your tassel. And you're gonna to go to knit and just wrap your yarn around like this. And then I'm gonna separate the tail from the working yarn, leave the tail behind and work as you normally would. Bring the yarn, the working yarn to the front. It's gonna be a little fiddly to start because it's gonna be loose, that, that, that working yarn. But you're gonna slip and next stitch, purl wise, bring the yarn to the back knit, bring the yarn to the front, slip that fourth stitch purlwise, and then turn your work like this. That's all there is to it. And you can work the rest of your tassels and I'll see you at the end. And this is what your work should look like when you've finished your tassels. As you can see, I have a lot of ends to weave in yet, but this is what it should look like when you've finished. And now we can work on the other side where we did the provisional cast on. So to begin, you're gonna to wanna to find that knot that we tied at the beginning. We're gonna unravel our provisional cast on starting with the side that we tied our knot. So I'm just gonna cut that off. And to begin unraveling, we're going to need to pick that first stitch here. We have this little loop. And now if we pull this, it's going to start unraveling everything. So I'll show you initially. We can unravel the first stitch together. I'm just going to pull that. And if you look carefully, you can see that first stitch right here. So you can see I've unraveled the first couple of stitches and you're gonna pick up one, two, three, four, just like this. And you can see that next one, five. And I'm just gonna keep unraveling like this. So this is the next one, six.
just like this. I'm going to do one at a time because this alpaca yarn is a bit knotty. Just like this. And if you actually, if you look, so this was kind of the front side. If you look at the back side, it is much easier to see each stitch as you unravel it as well. And as you reach the end, you can see we have one stitch left and those couple of chains there. So you can just unravel those chains and pull that scrap yarn out. And then there's your final stitch. I would recommend just counting these stitches quick to make sure you have the same amount that, amount that you originally cast it on. Now that we have our original cast on stitches on our needles, all 44 stitches, we're going to work our tassels in the exact same manner we did on the other side. So to start our first tassel, we're going to start with a knit as we did on the other side. We're going to take our, our yarn and attach it. Knit one. Bring the working yarn to the front of the needle. Slip one purlwise, knit one, bring the yarn to the front, and slip one purlwise. And now we're going to work back along those four stitches. Work the same 11 tassels along these stitches in the same way that you did the, your other edge. Here's the finished scarf after I finish my tassels and wove in the ends. If you'd like to see any of my written notes for this scarf, I will include a link to my Ravelry project in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching everyone and happy knitting!